My name's Zach Brock, and I'm a jazz violinist. I was, uh, I was born in Lexington, Kentucky. I started playing violin when I was about four years old. I, I got into to improvisation basically playing in, the, in, the, in this family group. Um, you know, just kind of learning how to mess around with little melodies. The first tune I learned was uh, Sweet Georgia Brown, and then the second tune I learned was probably something like Oh Lady Be Good, and then maybe a blues. And I uh, started going out to some of the jam sessions in town and you know, playing with some of the older musicians. And basically I would show up and I would just kind of play Oh Lady Be Good or whatever on, on any tune, you know. And you know, but starting to kind of mess around with stuff and you know, fit things in here and there, listen to the other players play. After one of the sessions one day, I, I thought I was really doing great, you know, and he kind of took me aside and said, you know, yeah, you know, you're, it's cool what you're doing, you know, this is, this is, you can tell that, you know, you've, you really love this and, you know, do you ever check out the things other than, you know, violin players, you know, like do you ever check out horn players and stuff like that? You know, I think that, you know, I can tell, basically he was saying, I can tell that you like this music and I think he, you know, he was saying, and now it's time for you to start really listening to the music, you know, because basically I was listening to a small slice of a certain style that was derived from, you know, and so then I started, you know, that, that made a big impression on me. And I had to stop listening to violin for a while. I had to just stop listening to violin players um, because I think as a violinist and when you listen to other people on your instrument, I think the influence can be so strong because there are things that you hear them do that you just pick up immediately because you, you, just, you can hear and you can, you, know, you can tell everything that they're doing and it comes much more naturally you know, then say trying to, you know, listen to saxophone and trumpet playing bebop with the rhythm section and kind of put that together. If there are violin players that are there that, you know, are thinking about, you know, playing, playing music in some way that they don't necessarily see a, a clear-cut solution for at the, at, the, at the time, then I hope that they see me do something that is, you know, obviously bizarre enough that they could feel free to go do anything that they would want to. I wouldn't be doing anything if it weren't for, you know, the musicians that I'm playing with, you know. so. It's not all up to me. It's it's up to us. It's what we do, you know, as you know, four musicians playing music together. You know, it's it's chamber music. It's not like it's not a violin concerto, you know, and it's not a solo violin, you know, showcase. It's you know, if it's if it's a jazz performance, then it's it's like it's like chamber music, you know. So 
you know, I might go into it thinking, you know, well, this is what I'm going for, and you know, Matt is going to go in thinking something, Fred's going to go in, you know, thinking something, Nate's going to go in thinking something, but ultimately, I think that the the idea is, once we're there playing together on stage, we're all thinking eventually about the same thing, you know, somehow, we make that happen, and uh, that's the that's the high wire act of of jazz and improvisation. <laughs>